Thanks for tuning in to MassapequaNews.com. For the Newsweek beginning September 18, 2007, I'm Christine Somer, sitting in the newsroom with the travel writer from the Washington Post, Carol Satili. Hi, Chris. Hi. It's so nice to finally meet you. Yes, finally. <laughs> I mean, we've been talking for how long? <laughs> Close to a year now. Yeah, at least. About a year ago, you first caught the attention of the news team in the piece that you wrote talking about my generation. Tell me a little bit about it, what inspired you to write it. That article is, is simply amazing. I've written thousands of articles during my career, but that article, I wrote it back in 2001. The last email I got on it was about three days ago. <laughs> I still get emails every single week. It was a story about growing up in Massapequa Park and what it meant to me. And I used it in a way to show also how many famous people come from Massapequa Park. I know you infused the Baldwins into that. Yes, they were a big part of it. Growing up and the places that you guys um, would use as your regular haunts right. in the early years. Yeah, Tobey Beach I talked about, I talked about Fire Island I think, I talked about the places we ate. And you threw in there the slang of Long Island, how we drop our R's. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Tell me um, what it means to be a travel writer with the Washington Post. Well, it's a wonderful job. I mean, it's great. I get to travel some. I have a regular column that I write every week that is a lot of fun. It's called What's the Deal? And it's about travel bargains. Yes. And I really enjoy doing that. And I do a lot of their consumer-oriented reporting, com travel consumer-oriented reporting, which is fun. What is, I know you and I discussed in the preliminary interview about some of the misconceptions about being a writer, being a travel writer mm -hmm. specifically. What would you say is the biggest misconception about being a travel writer? Well, people think it's very glamorous. They think <laughs> I'm going to wonderful resorts and it's all comped. And number one, at the Washington Post, we're not allowed to take anything for free, not even a t-shirt. So everything we pay for, and like most print journalisms, I mean, you're, you're internet, so you're exempt from this, but print, <laughs> we have a lot of budget problems right now. So what happens with that is we can't go stay at these fine places. So people think it's glamorous. It's not always that glamorous. And I know you mentioned some of the challenges that you face being a travel writer. What is your greatest challenge? Keeping it fresh is, is really a challenge because when you're writing travel, everybody thinks they can be a travel writer. They go on vacation, they have a great time. But when you start to write it, a lot of times it's well, I went to this great hotel and the massage was wonderful and the pool was beautiful. So it could but, be a little redundant. Yeah, very redundant. Especially if you're writing about things like skiing, golfing, activities that are the same no matter where you are. Right. So, so you have to keep it fresh, yeah. interesting, say it in a different way. Exactly. Like try to grab people. Try to make them interested in what you have to say. I could see that being a challenge. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that you got started in journalism right out of high school or while you were doing your undergrad with one of the local publications? Yes, Newsday. Newsday. Tell me about your position there. Started at Newsday back in 1973 when I graduated from high school. My dad wanted me to get a job and my father was a printer there and he said, hey, why don't you try to get a job as a clerk in the editorial section? And I didn't really want to go there because it was an office and oh, I didn't really want to be in an office environment. But I went there and the people were fun and I loved it and the rest is history. And you started out doing like some type of internship. I think the position back then was called copy boy. Well, yeah, I started as a copy boy, which wasn't an internship. That was just doing like a lot of the grunt work, basically, yes. um, you know, sharpening pencils. Filling the glue pots. I'm really dating myself now, but you know, doing that sort of thing. Well, this was back in the 70s. Yes. And I know that you were thrown into very critical stories because it was the summer of... Well, I stayed at Newsday for many years then. Even when I went away to college for my second... I went to Nassau Community for two years. And then when I went to Buffalo, I would come home on holidays and still work there as a clerk. And then I applied between my junior and senior year. I received an internship there, a reporting internship. And that was a summer where there was a lot going on. There was uh, Son of Sam was killing people in Brooklyn. 
the uh, there was the FALM bombings in Manhattan. Uh, there was a plane crash at Kennedy, and a lot of people were on vacation. So I had the opportunity to do a lot of that kind of reporting. And some of the earlier work involved you basically putting yourself almost into. Well, Don Forrest, our managing editor, had this wonderful idea that he wanted to send a male reporter and a female reporter with shoulder-length brown hair, which is, if you recall, who the Son of Sam was killing. He thought we should both go out in cars to the discos in Bensonhurst, which is what we did. We did not get shot, but Thank I remember you. Len like pulling the car up and jumping out as it was still running, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so the job definitely isn't overly glamorous. Well, and the field no. itself is somewhat has its job hazards. Well, it depends on. I started as a general assignment reporter, and for many, many years, I was a um, police reporter, general assignment, that sort of reporting. It's only in the last, oh, uh, I guess it's been about 10 years that I've gotten into travel writing. Very nice. Yeah. And growing up in Massapequa Park with a sibling and your parents. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know you still remain very close to your roots. I know your mom personally. She volunteers at the Board of Elections and the Homemakers Council. She's quite well known in the community, Pauline is. Yes, she is. <laughs> and you seem to have a great relationship with your uh, family. Yeah, and you know, a lot of my family is still in on Long Island, maybe not in Massapequa. My mother's still in Massapequa Park. But my brother's in Wisconsin, and I have cousins out in Setauket and Port Jefferson, so it's not as if I don't have ties here. I still do. Yes. And I try to get back at least a few times a year, although it gets difficult with the traffic on 95. <laughs> <laughs> but I try. Carol, if there is one little girl out there listening and watching, and you've inspired her even remotely to want to be a writer, to follow her passion for journalism, what advice would you offer? Well, people always seem to think that you have to go to Harvard or you have to go to Columbia or you have to go to a wonderful school to get a great career in journalism, but you don't. You just have to work hard. And like with me, I started as a clerk, as a copy aide, and I worked my way up from there. So just work hard. You can go to community college. Community college can work. You can, If you don't have the money to go to a great school, just work part-time. Do what I did. I worked full-time and went to school full-time. And you set yourself apart from just, your competition. Exactly. Just work really hard. I think that's true of any career, though, no matter what it is. If you work really hard, you yes. differentiate yourself from the crowd. And People you, will take notice. And you found yourself saying yes when everyone else was saying no. Yeah, there was a lot of women who thought I was absolutely nuts <laughs> going to Bensonhurst to <laughs> bar when he was shooting people. And in retrospect, maybe I was a little nuts, but I was also very young. And so. wouldn't ever recommend young girls no, do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> um, where can you be found? WashingtonPost.com. Um, every Sunday my column runs on page three of the uh, print section, but it's also online. And you can go to WashingtonPost.com slash travel and you can come up with what's the deal and you can contact me that way. Carol, thank you so much for coming on Mass Speaking News. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This has been great fun. You're very welcome and we hope to see you back. Okay, bye. Mass Speaking, have a great week. We'll see you here next.